any suggestions for knife rehabilitation services? Asks somebody. I brought mine to a reputable place and each knife wrapped in a diagram and they <laughs> rounded off all my bevels, including two favorites I bought from Sorel Notions and Finding. Ooh. Hi, Mario. Mar Mariano, sorry. That's um, great. So what is, do you have anybody who sharpens or do you usually um, upkeep your own tools? I sharpen my own knives, but I am not going to tell you I'm the person you should listen to for knife sharpening advice. <laughs> I am definitely not that person. But it, it works for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, you know, good to know that, you know, you're not a, you're not the, this, sometimes we, I mean, I'm like fangirling you, but, you know, okay, so she has the strengths and the weaknesses and it's it's your human too <laughs> yes I, I'm um human too. <laughs> do you think you'll do anything differently after this pandemic is over or do you feel like you f you see yourself right now going the similar pace and also not changing so much of what you do so do you feel comfortable that you can go on i you know, I had already started changing before the pandemic, and um, I like the path that I'm on because of my age and how hard I worked. Oh, I just, uh, a customer of mine says that he will rehab knives, so send me a private oh. email. It's Tom Carbone, 56. Oh, I see send that. Send me an email or a message, and I'll pass along his information. Tom oh, is great. a great guy, and he could fix knives way better than I could. Great. Okay, so back to the pandemic thing. Um, I had already started changing. My hands, my hands are aging, and mm. I don't know. I don't know how many more boots I have in me. I'm trying to um, prolong that as long as possible, and. With that thought in mind, I've raised my boot price prices a whole lot. I always tell, I, sometimes people think my boot prices are where they are because I'm a snot and I think I'm wonderful. <laughs> and that's not true. And I um, feel like, I, I think you value your, your talent and your, I think, I don't, I don't think the price is expensive compared to like, it's, Yes, it's expensive as a person who doesn't make that much money. But I think if you look at it from the other side, I think it's way worth it. Well, you know, I, know I don't just value my talent and my experience. I feel that bootmaker, cowboy bootmakers as a whole should make more money. Mm. And if me raising my price means that somebody out there is going to go, well, if she thinks she's that good, I'm better. And they raise their price. That's what I want. Mm. And then there's also the fact, sorry. It'll go no, it's okay. Do you want to pick it? No. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> They'll leave a message. Right. There's also the fact that um, when I talk to people with established businesses and, um, and they say, I'm too busy to do this thing. I don't want to do this thing anymore. My waiting time is too long. So now I don't have time to do this thing. I always tell them, don't say no. Raise your price until you get to a level where if they go for it, you're happy. I don't care if right. it's $1.2 million. Raise your point <laughs> price until you get to the point that if they go ahead and order, you're happy instead of sad. Right. And that's what I've done with, with my cowboy boots. I, my hands won't, I can't make six pairs of boots anymore. My, my body's not up to it. Is that what and you so used to I, do? Six months, six pairs a month? Four like, to six, yeah. Wow. And so I had to find a price point just to slow it down mm -hmm. and, and give me the freedom to do what I wanted to do. Right. And right. also, if someone looks at that and thinks, oh, that's an appropriate price for cowboy boots, and then goes and pays that much, whether it's with me or someone else, then yay, that's a win for all of us. Right, 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 right. I this I think this is where I got that question where would you take an apprentice for example who you trust or who you 
uh, can work under your shop, under your name together as like, as a helper? Would you do something like that? Where it's... If I found the, the right apprentice, I, I'm a little gun shy because I thought I had that nailed down at one point and it didn't work out. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, got it. Yeah, it, it would have to be the right person. Right. But I'm okay. certainly open to that. Right. Because I would love for you to keep on making with your, you know, hands. So. I would like, <laughs> I would like to as well. I don't plan yeah. to stop. No, but no, it had no. to slow down because yes. otherwise I, I was going to reach that end of the line next Quicker. year instead yeah. of 10 or 15 yeah. or 20 years from yeah. now. Right, right. Another question is um, the machinery. How did you learn all the machinery? Can you refurbish yourself or do you have like a te technician that's near you who can come and help you service? The... When I first started mm -hmm. out, there was a guy that would come around and work on machines, but um, he's gone now. Mm. And so with the bigger machine, well, with any of the machines, like with the bigger machines, the ones behind me, then mm -hmm. um, there's a traveling guy, Steve Muller, who will come uh -huh. around and work on your machines. So if you have major issues, that might be what you have to do. But most of the time, your machine issues are timing issues. Whether yeah. we're talking about a flatbed or a curved needle, it's almost yeah. always a timing issue. And I rem I can time my sewing machines, no problem. If you own a sewing machine in a boot shop, you better be able to time yeah, your own too. machines. Yeah. That's just the way it is. And yeah. um, let me move that. So Lisa did form follow function in the okay. origin. It's at least quieter. And as far as the big machines I have timed my own curve needle I don't like mm. to do it I'm not very good at it when I first started it would take me literally two hours to time my own curve needle but um, I kept at it and now I'm faster and I can usually time one in about 20 or 30 minutes but um, wow timing is is not easy but it is possible yeah. and okay. I highly recommend just jump in there and learn to time your own machines Wow. Okay. Yeah, I still haven't learned the outsole curve needle um, stitcher. Uh, I learned once and I, I'm still t intimidated by it. And uh, I had it's to let go. It's a scary machine. It is. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, okay, and, there's and one. It's hard, it's hard not to fight it. It's so big that you want to push and pull and fight that machine. And you, you have to find that balance between letting it feed and letting it sew right off the toe because you weren't, you weren't guiding. <laughs> right, right, right. Stuff. Yeah. Oh man. But now you have a good, good relationship with your, your girl. That's good. That's great. Yes. <laughs> so someone's asking deep, if, in yeah. my opinion, did form follow function in uh -huh. cowboy boot design? Uh, there's not a lot of written information about cowboy boots and their evolution from plain black to this but it is my opinion that everything from here up as far as color and design goes is completely completely and totally optional and private is, in a way yes it is only art this boot would be just as functional if it were plain black with no stitching so what that tells me is all of this is art. It's about vanity. It's about art. And um, it's not functional. It, mm. It's simply happiness. Right. Now, now but, this, this is functional. Yes. You do that wrong and you cripple someone or you hurt them or you make them unhappy. Uh -huh. But this is just art. The top part. Yep. Yeah. I remember, I think you told me and it totally made sense was... Uh, that it's a man's uh, private kind of art and it's also men's high heels. It's like they're... Yeah. <laughs> I, just a sec, I have somebody yeah. at the door. I will be sure. right back, I promise. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, do you still have... Smashbug asks, do you still have the each out among the stars boot you made for your husband or at the shop? They're amazing. How did you achieve the shape? Okay, I actually don't know which one it is, but I'll ask. Um, 
I need that. I heard that the rider could be ejected safely from horse and the boot would fall to the ground. Mm, interesting. Yes, it's a personal expression. Definitely. So Haley. Oh, don't run. Okay. Oh, don't run, don't run. That's no, that's my favorite thing to do when you're wearing leather soles and I have uh -huh. I have a wood floor in my shop, so I, I like to run really fast and then just like slide. To where slide. I'm yes. <laughs> just please be careful. <laughs> but there's, there's a person who just commented, I heard that the rider could be a horse and the boots would fall to the ground. So there's a function to the boots. No. Yes? It's not. No? Okay. I, think that's, I think that's a legend because with a cowboy boot, there, there's yeah. no buckles or laces to tighten. And it, a proper fit, the short heel is vital. Yeah. So the proper fit is you have to put your fingers in the pulls and pull and your heel should thunk down in. So what that means is if you get caught in the stirrup and you're upside down like this being drugged by a horse, your foot's not coming out. That, that's just a legend. It, that doesn't happen. So, um, no, I think cowboy boots are oh, working wow. here, but they are also Let's see. Oh, yeah. that's good to know. They're that's, also about. Manhood. I'm learning new things every day. In my yeah. opinion. Yeah, personal expression. Yeah, yeah. somebody else. Um, one person, Smashbug, asks: um, Each out among the stars boots that you made for your husband are they at the shop? They are amazing. How did you achieve the shape? And I that was, personally that was, don't. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that was tough because if you look closely at that boot, uh, the vamp, instead of being here, that line comes up to here. Wow. So basically what it is, is a really short one piece boot with a top on top. Wow. Because once you go above this, crimping yep. is incredibly difficult. And yep. crimping an alligator is, is scary because you know, you're working with several hundred dollars worth of leather that's wanting to tear. Yeah. Um, so I would say I achieved that shape with crimping, lots yep. and lots of careful crimping. And we do still own those boots. They are at an exhibit in, um, in LA right now at the oh. Otis College. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Wait, for, Otis College? Okay. Yeah, Otis College in, in LA. I can't uh -huh. remember the name of the exhibit. Of the show? Okay. Yeah. I'll but look then I think Craft in America is going to do an exhibit and they're taking the boots. So I don't know when we'll get them back. There's, they're going oh. into another exhibit. Are these the boots that have been winning awards? I feel like you have won many awards somehow. Like I've seen some photos and this is a traveling I, I boot. Won, I have won, in a, won awards. It's actually been a while because I'm not making as many boots and not entering as many competitions. I'm looking forward to the next Shoemaker's Days in Wiesbaden, Germany. That will be in 2022 in March. And I love entering oh. that one. It's so much okay. fun to get to go there. Let's see. Do you think cowboy boots took decorative inspiration from Native American moccasins? That's hmm. a good question. It's possible yeah. because, again, I keep holding these boots because they're next to me. But... Um, when I see beadwork, I see things that can be inlaid. There are lots of designs that can't be inlaid because they're too complex or something. And it's, it mm -hmm. does remind me of beadwork. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that. Again, nobody bothered writing down. How <laughs> right. How, right. I'm curious yeah. about the um, favorite welt stitch. I hear I'm, I haven't made cowboy boots on my own. Uh -huh. myself so I'm actually not so familiar at the same time I've been look, looking at other people's creations so, right. you know the um the welt stitching seems to be different and really decorative and di just varieties um and I don't know if it's just the length or the color or how you twist it or you know tie those not knots but you know how you weave it but I was just curious right. if you have a favorite no I just do a basic basic welt stitch. Um, let's see, I've got one at that stage. Let's 
so these have been these have been inseamed and they're ready for me to put the sole on uh -huh. But this is just a really basic, I, I've already got the filler in, so you can't see uh -huh. the other part of the stitch, but it's just a basic serpentine stitch. So I uh -huh. attach both ends of the thread to a bristle and then feed them through the holes like this. Uh huh. And, and yep. it's just a basic serpentine welt stitch. I don't, I haven't played with anything fancy. Okay. 